Hello, my friends. So you've downloaded and installed Articulate Storyline 360, and now you're ready to get started. Perfect, because in this video, we're gonna dive into the first five things you should know about the tool. So let's dive into it. Uh, first things first, once you've opened up Storyline 360, you can go ahead and select the new project option in the top left. And then we'll want to save our project, which you can do by going to File and Save As. And I'll just name this one Storyline 101. You could call it whatever you'd like. And notice the source file is a .story file. So just type in whatever name, save it wherever you want it on your computer, and then select Save. We could see the name of our project at the top here. And now um, all we have to do whenever we want to save our project as we're developing is press Control S on our keyboard or Command S if we're on a Mac. And that's really important when you're working in Storyline because if it crashes or something, the auto saves aren't very frequent and you can lose a lot of progress. So make sure you're saving frequently. And if you want to see all of the keyboard shortcuts, go ahead and download the checklist that I've linked in the description. Um, those shortcuts will save you dozens or hundreds of hours in your storyline development journey. So pause the video if you need to and grab that. But um, let's dive back into it. Before we dive into the five first things you should know, um, kind of a little bonus one is the difference between slide and scene view. So right now we're in something called story view or another way to think about it is scene view. It's where you can see all of the scenes and all of the slides in your project. So this white rectangle right here, this is a slide where we can actually add stuff to. So to get into slide view, you can actually double click on this. And if you ever want to get back into story view where you can see that big bird's eye view of your whole project, you can select that tab in the top left. But we'll dive back into slide view and we are on the only slide in our project, which is 1.1. So the first key thing you should know when it comes to using Storyline is how to add media. And the most straightforward way to do that is with the insert tab up here at the top. So we'll go to the insert tab. And now here are all sorts of different things that we can add to this slide that people will be able to see when they're actually experiencing the project. So the first thing we could add is a text box. So you can actually click on text box. And notice now when I move my mouse off of it, it's highlighted. And then I can click on the screen wherever I want that text box to start. So I'll just click on the screen and then I will start typing. So I'll just type in Storyline 101. And then um, if you wanna like style your text, you could go ahead and highlight it, the text that you wanna change, and you could change the font of it up here. You could see we have all these fonts available. You could change the font size. This is very similar to any other kind of like, um, any other tool you would use like Story or like Microsoft Word, Google Docs, PowerPoint. It's all very, very similar. And then you can see if you drag it by the edge, you could kind of drag that wherever you'd like to. You could also add a shape. So I'm gonna go back to the insert tab. I'm going to select this shape option. And notice now it's a big drop down, and you can choose any of these shapes. So I'm gonna choose a rectangle because I'll just create a quick button right here. So I'll just drag the rectangle. You could drag, click and drag however you want it, you know, however big you want it. And then with that rectangle selected, you could actually type into it. Um, to add text. So similarly, once you've typed that text, you can highlight it, you can go to the home tab, and you can change that text. So I'll just make it the same uh, font that I used for the title, and it doesn't really matter. This isn't a design lesson, but I'm just showing you how you can add these things. So once again, you can go to the insert tab and you can add a picture. You can also do this with videos and audios. All of this stuff will come from your computer. Um, the content library 360, that's like stock media that Storyline provides that you would get on a subscription. So we're not going to use any of the content library stuff, but I will add a picture from my computer and I'll just add like my logo over here just to show you how you can add pictures too. So here's how you could add stuff to the slide. Obviously there are other options. So if you want, you can pause this video, play around with some of these other things, but don't get too far ahead <laughs> um, because we, if you, especially if you're still a beginner. So that's how you actually add stuff to the slide. The next piece is how to actually add new slides to your project because, you know, we're going to want something to happen when the user clicks this get, get started button. So there are a few ways to go ahead and do that. Um, the easiest way is with the slide you have selected, you could go ahead and press Control M on your keyboard to create a new slide or Command M if you're on a Mac. Again, if you don't have that keyboard shortcut list, uh, go ahead and grab it because those shortcuts can save so much time. There are other ways to do it though. You can go to the slides tab and then select new slide. 
You could also even right click on a slide, hover over new slide, hover over basic layouts, and then select the blank slide. But obviously control M is a lot easier than, than any of those options. And then um, to create a new text box, a shortcut you could use is control T. So I'll just say this is some helpful content. I'll just leave a little placeholder here because you know we're just looking at how to add media, how to add slides. Um, and notice if we go back to story view now, we can see all of the slides in our project. So this is one scene, it's, which is like a folder for all of our slides. And then we can see our individual slides. And in the other storyline videos we have on the channel, you can learn a lot more about how all of this stuff works, but these are just the first five essentials, so to speak. So I'm going to double click back into slide 1.1 to open it up. And the next thing we want to look at now is how to create a trigger. And triggers can get quite advanced, but um, triggers are essentially the one of the most important features of Articulate Storyline because it's how you make your project interactive. So you've probably noticed Storyline is quite similar to PowerPoint, but triggers are what make all the difference. It's how you actually make something happen in the learning experience when the user gives some sort of input. So let's take a look at this together. We will build a simple one. So to create a trigger, we go over in this right panel here and we can select this create a new trigger button. So once we click on that, notice we can set an action. So here's what we want to happen. So we want to jump to slide next slide and then we can say when we want that to happen. Not when the timeline starts, but when the user clicks on rectangle one. And notice I'm just mousing over all these different objects. Rectangle one is the name of that blue um, rectangle we added. So I'll click on that and then I can press the OK button. But notice there are so many more actions. Again, you could pause and check out all of these actions right now. These will be really good to get an idea of. These are the different things that you can make happen when the user clicks on something or hovers over something or, um, you know, double clicks on something. You, similarly to looking at all the different actions that, that the user could perform, you can look at all the different whens. So these are like, when do you want that action to happen? When the user clicks, double clicks, right clicks. Uh, obviously there are some that are a bit more complex that we explore in other videos, but this is a very basic trigger. Okay, so we will just press the OK button. We want to jump to the next slide when the user clicks rectangle one, which means that when, when we're previewing this, when the user selects get started, it will bring them to this second slide that we created. So nice and simple. So that's the next step. That's the next thing you should know how to do. You should know how to preview your work so that you can experience your project just like your end user would. So the easiest way to do that is to select this preview button up here in the top in the toolbar at the top. And you can see this in like pretty much every one of these tabs. Um, it's the last or, or close to the last one of these um, options in every tab. So you're looking for preview. And when you click on the top part of this icon, it will preview the entire project. So every single slide and every single scene in your project. If you only want to preview an individual slide, you can select that little drop down arrow and it gives you some additional options. Okay. So I'm just going to click on the icon at the top and it will preview the entire project. And the more slides that you include in the preview, the longer it will take to load. And so now let's see when I click on this get started button, notice my cursor changes. And when I click on it, it does indeed bring us to this next slide. So that's what we wanted to see. I can click close preview now to return to um, the slide. And just to show you, if I click on this drop down and then select this slide, then it will only show me this slide. Notice that second slide isn't there. And if I click on this, nothing happens because that second slide isn't included in the preview. So something to be careful of. You can also use these shortcuts over here in the top right, but by default, when you're in slide view, it will only preview the slide that you're viewing. So if you want to preview interactions across slides, that will not work. Now, what you've also probably noticed, let me just open this back up, is there's all of this stuff around the slide that we designed. So all of this stuff around the white slide, that this is called the player. Notice there's like a menu over here. There are like different buttons we can access, volume. And there's even a next button down here in the bottom right. So if we were to click that, it would bring us to the next slide if it were included in the preview. So the final thing you should know how to do is how to modify the player. So from the home tab, we can go ahead and select player. And then Notice we can change all of these options. So like we can show certain tabs and hide them. Like if we don't want the menu, we can just get rid of it. If we don't want the title to appear in the top left, we can get rid of that. 
or we can just turn off all of the menus and controls. So we'll turn that off. And then um, if we select on, if we select colors and effects right now, every, all of the like background essentially will be this dark black color. But if we change it to light, then the background will be white. So it will be just our slide nice front and center. So I will select OK now. I'm going to preview the whole project again and you will see how it's different. So now, now our slide takes up like the full screen. So when we press get started, see it just blends in with the background because the slide is white, the background is white. So that's how to kind of get rid of the player if you want to control all of your navigation with buttons on the screen just like this. So those are the first five things you should know when you're using Storyline. If you are experienced with Storyline and you have a different perspective, um, go ahead and let us know in the comments. And I probably shared more than five things, but you can learn a lot more about Storyline on this channel. There are plenty more videos. We actually have a whole getting started with Articulate Storyline video and playlist. So if you want to follow along and build some like real actual projects with me, then go ahead and check out those workshops and tutorials linked in the description below. I'll see you in the next video and thanks for making it to the end of this one.